Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I work in Power Systems Advanced Technologies Abroad in Europe. In this video, we'll be looking at Power VC 1.2. This is part three of the series. We're going to be looking at configuring the V7000 disks, the sound switches, the network, and the servers ready for capture and deploy. I'm going to assume that you've seen part one and two, which is installing Power VC and the graphical user interface. So here's my brand new Power VC. You can see there's no resources in here at all. And we're going to look at the adding the storage first. And we could equally click down here. So what's the details of our storage device? So I'll type those in now. Auto magically. So we're using the host name. It's a V7000 called TAN. This is my ID and my password. You can see here we can also use SSH keys if you're going to use those uh, secure passwords. In this case, if we give it a username and password, the first thing you'll do is actually go and exchange the keys for us. So it's letting you check these if you want to. I'm in the same computer room. I don't think there's any hackers in here with me. So I'll just click connect. Okay, it's logged on to it. You can see how much of my resource is uh, actually available and uh, in total. This looks good. This is what I was expecting. So we'll okay that. Okay, looks good. It's giving me a little message down here. I can find that up in the messages as well. It's saying now will be a good time to add the fabric so that uh, it can actually connect these disks to servers. So we'll do that now. Again, I'll automatically fill these in. We just happen to have the right IBM Brocade sound switches. It's very fussy on the sound switches at the moment. Uh, if you haven't got the right switches, you can use uh, zoning via ports uh, to get around that. In the short term, I expect more sound subsystems to be supported in the future. In our case, we actually have three sound switches all working as one switch. You have to log on to the uh, primary controller. So I'll add that and connect. Successfully added. We can see these two things up in here. If we look at messages, we can see there's two successes. If we look down in here, we can, if from the fabrics tab, we can see the fabric and the storage providers. We can see my V7000. Volumes, of course, are disk volumes. We haven't actually created any yet, so that's still zero. We can see zero down here. If we go back to the main menu in here, we can go to uh, add network. I find it automatically discovers some networks as it goes, particularly the uh, virtual ones on the machines. But we'll add one directly now. Okay, and it's um, static, not uh, dynamic, so we can add that network now. And there we go, get the message, and wait for it. There's the details. Let's turn our attention now to our hosts. Up here it has our HMC connections, which is none of course, but there doesn't seem to be a way to add HMCs, but if we click the host button, it will say, well, to get to the host we need the HMC. This is PowerVC standard edition, so it knows there must be HMCs. I'll automatically fill these in now. So here are the details. We'll uh, add the connection now to the HMC. Let us check that it's the right machine. got the usual it's okay message coming up in here now it's uh, logging on to that HMC to uh, see if it can find some machines and it will let us select those machines now it knows about it so here's the list of machines on this HMC this looks good we can um, later on to say connect to all of them but we actually want to select this particular green one is my primary target for my virtual machines. So let's um, add that particular host. Okay, gives us the error message. We can see it's found it, it's connected to it, and now it's gathering information about it. I'm guessing here, but it's something to do with the, um, the VO servers and things like that. Probably also gathering the configuration of the machine so that it knows how much uh, free space is available on it. Now let's select our machine and see uh, some of the details in here. Uh, there's no existing virtual machines. We come back out a level and uh, we can do manage existing virtual machines in here. And we can either 
ask it to go look at all of them and um, select what you, it can out of that that it's uh, happy with or we can ask it to select a particular uh, virtual machine so let's uh, let it go and find all the ones it's happy to start managing let's put that in the background in here let's see that up here in the messages and eventually we should find them appearing here in our virtual machines it's actually reporting here some of them can't uh, be used for various reasons typically at the moment they're not uh, MPIV based logical partitions and it also looks like uh, it's saying that it's actually managed by a different storage provider so maybe that's the second V7000 so I can certainly go and add the other storage provider this is the uh, time machine let's go and connect up my other one there it is that's used a little bit more than, than the first one now that it understands both V7000s when we go to manage the existing virtual machines it will find the MPIV virtual machines and the disks that they're on and be happy to start managing them there we go, it says that there's uh, seven have been added and three aren't supported, a couple of those can be my VO servers so we can actually see here now that it's found these virtual machines that it's happy to go off and configure. It's still gathering information about them. Well, we'll leave that to settle down and then we'll start operating PowerVC with our captures and deploys. If you'd like to know more, these are the places to go and have a look.